These young women are the granddaughters of Rabia Kadir, an exiled Uyghur political activist based in the United States. They are part of a sophisticated campaign being waged by China's state media. It's designed to counter Western narratives about the mass detention of ethnic Uyghurs in China's autonomous region of Xinjiang. This video, like many others, uses relatives of outspoken Uyghurs in a bid to prove they are safe and discredit claims about human rights abuses. But experts say it's likely that family members have been coerced. It would be dangerous for the people involved to refuse to go along. I believe they have been scripted uh, as part of um, Chinese government propaganda campaign to try and deflect uh, from the fact that a lot of people around the world are actually uh, waking up to the atrocities in Xinjiang. This video was broadcast by Global Times, and others like it have been aired on CGTN, China's state-run global television network. CGTN stands accused of broadcasting forced confessions and is now under investigation by the UK's broadcasting regulator. It's also broadcast a TV series about terror attacks in Xinjiang. This, the Chinese government says, demonstrates the need for mass detentions to prevent Islamic extremism. China's practice in Xinjiang echoes the United Nations Violence Prevention Program. But these slick productions hide the reality of China's treatment of ethnic Uyghurs. There's definitely an information war that's going on. Disinformation warfare attempts on, uh, on the part of the Chinese government. This video, broadcast last year, shows a Uyghur poet alive and insisting he's in good health after reports emerged he had died in prison. China uses examples like this that cannot be verified to dismiss other reports as fake news. You know, part of what happens with this type of propaganda, it's not that it's all false. It's not that it's all completely made up. But then in terms of the framing are you know, distorting and in terms of the narrative, and perhaps there are also injected to, into it particular points of information that might actually be false. <laughs> The hashtag still no info documents the thousands of Uyghurs overseas who are unable to contact their family members in Xinjiang. CGTN again here uses a single example to try and discredit those who have posted under the hashtag. Her cousin's husband, Abdullah Rasul, was the one who posted about her and the alleged disappearance of a few other family members. It is difficult to measure whether China's media blitz is effective. CGTN has a vast reach, with 92 million followers on Facebook, and is beamed into millions of homes across 100 countries. But what the efforts do show is that the Chinese government is sensitive about perceptions of its policies in Xinjiang. Recent leaks appear to have heightened that sensitivity. But for Uyghur activists, this media campaign shows the Chinese government is not only controlling the lives of Muslims in Xinjiang, it's determined to control the narrative too.